All right, question seven. Art institutions contribute to the art world on a regular basis by hosting lectures and art shows. Open the seven lecture word processing document. Okay. Follow 711. Follow the instructions in the comment in the document and then remove the comment. So there's the instruction. Change the heading Lecture on Impressionism to a word art of your choice. Okay, so insert word art and then remove the comment. So you can, you can try and right click and delete comments. Sometimes, I don't know, you don't always get that option. So then under review, you can delete the comment. 712, reject all the track changes in the document. Please note, you do not need to switch it on to reject the changes. So click reject all changes 7.1.3 invitations to the lecture must go out to guests complete a mail merge as follows use the seven guests database as a data source for the seven lecture mail merge document so we go to mailings start mail merge we've got a full page so it is a letter and we're going to link it to this document they just told us seven guests okay then edit the data source recipient list to only include the data of those members who have painting as an art form and who have painted more than 60 paintings so edit recipient list painting only painting and more than 60 paintings. So for that, we need advanced. Number of paintings needs to be greater than, let me just double check the wording of that. Um, was it greater than or equal to uh, more than 60 paintings? Okay, so it's greater than 60. Okay. Replace the text name with the merge field name and replace the text surname with the merge field surname. See, there they are. Name and surname. Oh, come on. Okay. Save the document, but do not close it. Save. Then complete the merge and save the merged document as seven lecture merge. So finish and merge. If you want to check that it's correct before, you can preview the results and click through the different records. Preview results off. Finish and merge. Edit individual documents all. There you go, letters one, and they said we should save it as, I'm just going to copy that name, seven lecture merge, file save as, make sure that you actually save it in the correct folder, and give it the correct name, save. Right, close that document. 7.2. Open the seven art form spreadsheet. Use a spreadsheet feature to split the data stored in column A into different columns. The comma must be used to split the data into columns. Hint, use the spreadsheet feature text to columns on the data tab in the data tools group. Okay, it can't get any more clear than that. So you select this data on the data tab in the data tools group. There is something called text to columns. So text to columns. It is clearly delimited because it is separated by a comma. Can you see? Next, it is a comma that separated it. 
because we can see that. Next, finish. And there it's actually split it into the different commas, into the different columns. Save and close. 7.3. Open the 7 summary spreadsheet. Use the subtotal feature to determine the greatest number of artworks painted by an artist according to the birth country. So we'll select the data only with one heading row. The birth country field is already sorted, which is nice. Otherwise, we would have had to sort it ourselves. So it's on the formulas tab, is it? Can't remember now suddenly. Data, there it is, subtotal on the data tab. Subtotal, we want to do it by birth country. So it's at each change in birth country. We want to have a max of the number of artworks. Do I remember correctly now? Uh, to determine the greatest number of artworks. Correct. Okay. Number of artworks, max at each change in birth country. Okay. And then it shows me in France, the max is 900, Germany, 476, and so forth. 7.4. Open the 7 timeline spreadsheet. The art gallery manager wants to know which paintings were created by the same artist in consecutive years, where one year follows the previous year. Use the following steps to assist the art gallery manager. Step 1. Sort the data alphabetically according to artist and then from the earliest to the latest year in which the painting was completed. So we select our data and we need to sort it. Custom sort. Sort according to artists and then according to the year completed and did they say let's just double check again alphabetically according to artists and then from earliest to latest year so we've got it correct yes. smallest to largest year all right so we've got the sorting correct now let's see Step 2. Insert a formula in column D to perform the following checks. Check 1. Start from row 2 and check whether the artist in the current row is the same as the artist in the previous row. Okay, so we actually start from the second row of the data. Check 2. Check whether the artist painted a painting in the previous year by checking if the difference between the year in the current row and the year in the previous row is 1. If check 1 and check 2 are both true, then display true, or otherwise display false. And there they show us the output. Okay, so basically we've got two checks to perform. If both are true, then the answer is true, otherwise the answer is false. So, I think the method that you would be the most familiar with to do this will be a nested if. So they've given us very clear steps to do this. So we just need to follow the instructions one by one. Let's start. So function builder. Firstly, they said test if this artist is the same as the artist in the previous row. Then there needs to be a second test. So that means the value if true needs to be the next if. Now before I insert that, I'm first going to insert the value of false so that I don't have to come back to this if. If the first test is failed, then the value if false is false. Okay, so the answer is false. If they fail this, then the answer is false. If they pass this first test, then a second test needs to be performed. So here we need to insert a second if. Now, personally, I prefer, instead of just typing this out, actually inserting another if function so that I get, get this if function builder again. So the way you do this is while you stand in the box, whether it's in value if true or in value if false, 
you actually go to the top here, here by where it says the, the um, cell name. And if you click on the drop down arrow here, you can click on if again, so that it actually inserts a if function for you. So if you look at your formula bar over here, you'll see that it's busy building a nested if for you, but you actually just working with one function at a time. So for lots of people, this is a bit easier. All right, so our second test is whether this year minus the previous year equals one. Let's just put this in brackets. If the answer to this um, calculation is equal to one, then the answer is true. Otherwise, the answer is false. Okay, so you'll notice that I actually didn't put um, inverted commas around any of the true or falses, because true or false actually isn't a word. Just like in access, um, it's a yes or no, on or off, true or false. Um, it actually doesn't need parentheses around it. All right, so okay. And let's test if this works. There you go, it actually works. So Alfred Sisley, there, it's the same. It's a year after each other, it's the same artist. It's a year after each other, it's the same artist. Okay, and that's the easiest way to do this one. I can't actually remember, um, did they say we should copy it down? Actually don't think they did. Um, well, they show the example of the output, so I'll just copy it down for the whole uh, column anyway. Double click and then it copies it down for everything. All right, so I hope this helped. Good luck with your exams.